I have registration and airworthiness. It's physics, math, and engineering. Machine it, draft it, build it, test it, break it. Every time something new gets built, the entire world advances. Laying in bed at night, it's designing new parts, designing new suspension, designing new wings. This is my build book of building Scrappy and my aircraft log book, my engine log book from when the engine was racing. And I have registration and airworthiness. Experimental sign off is done. Woo! -hoo! So, obviously, we're a couple of videos behind, but we're going to catch up. This is one of them. Let's get caught up. Back to work. All right, guys, I'm connecting my torque tubes so they're locked wingtip to wingtip. So I had to make all these components. This is one that inserts into the steel chromoly tube that's uh, a double walled tube that passes through scrappy. And then that's got a thicker end because this is the pin set that locks it together. Then this is designed to connect through this adaption plate. This plate, I insert simple rubber slide ins on both sides. Then this gets bolted on a three point and then opposing on the other side, this one gets bolted on the opposing three point. So once I bolt it all together, where the wing tube passes through the fuselage out to the each wing, all bolted together permanently, there is a flex joint that allows flex movement, but the roll stays perfect. That's for any movement passing out to the wing. Now there should be none, it's a strutted wing, but I did want to have something other than a hard bolt point for any flex vibration. So that's what this custom machine part is all about. So I'm gonna quickly assemble this. I've made this assembly before for past components for vehicles in my engineering firm. So this is a very standard system, just miniaturized and made specifically for my wing torque tube. So let's get it installed, back to work. All right guys, next step, the leading edge double slats that pass in and out of the wing. They're all machine set perfect and ride on bearings. These are high sealed bearings designed to handle 600 pounds of load, which is so far beyond what I need. But let's assume somehow the stainless steel bearing went bad. We want the slats to still operate like they're on a traditional bushing, like in a Cessna or any other certified aircraft. So the system is designed so if there were a bearing failure, now it just tracks like it's a bushing. You probably never know. You wouldn't find it till an annual inspection and it wouldn't hurt anything. But let's go one step further. Let's say that bearing when it went bad allowed a little bit of side to side movement and acted more like a traditional bushing. So these are backups to that event. This is the shape of the leading edge. There'll be two going through each section of where the leading edge slats pass in and out of the wing. The way I've designed it in the computer is that these set 10 thousandths of an inch outside the aluminum skin. So they actually protrude proud. And they are a guide so as the leading edge devices go in and out, if there was any kind of pressure or side load or wind or a bearing failure that was extreme and it somehow pushed those devices one way or the other, they'll actually ride on the side of this Garolite. Now there's lots of types of Garolite out there. I really like to use it for all kinds of things. Sometimes it's conductive, non-conductive, you can get it either way. This one is actually a graphite infused Garolite. It's really smooth and it, it, you can put hard plate of metal on it and push it, it just slides. But the infused graphite is what keeps it lubricated indefinitely. So as it slides, if somehow that device hit the side and it slid, it would just be like silk. 
and it helps hold everything perfectly aligned and true if there were multiple failures that allowed it to move. So this is the backup to the backup. I've got to go put them on all across the front of the wing. So we did this and cut this out of a uh, water jet. So you can see it right there. Just stacked them, cut them all at once. It's extremely hard. So this took almost as long to cut as if this were a solid plate of stainless steel. Let's get it installed. Back to work. All right, guys. We're starting to put together the flaps and ailerons, which is awesome. These brackets right here are just for the flaps. They have little assemblies that just laid out. We made all our own bushings and spacers so that everything is perfectly aligned and true. It looks like a lot of parts, and it actually is, but they're just aluminum, so they're really lightweight. But these will act as the flat push torque tubes, and there's two per side and two bars on each set. So the reason for that is, is that no matter how much pressure I put on it, if you use only one bar, you get a little bit of flex in the bolt that's connecting push rod. So now that I got two side by side, the load force is dead center and the bolts don't lean at all. And since I machined them and don't have to have adjustable ball ends on them, um, two together weigh almost the exact same weight as a single, but I get way more strength and uh, no fatigue over time. So that is the flat push rods. Now these are some custom brackets I made for the ailerons and I'm getting the cables moved further in, but it's partial. this is all for the fact that the ailerons droop. So I had to make something really custom. There's bigger bearings that will snap fit in there. They got little C-clip rings that will pop in. Then there's a bearing that goes in this end at the top. That will get its ring. And then this will be the rod that pushes and pulls it. And then these are where the cables have got. So hope that makes sense. It will when it's all together. Let's drop these bearings in, get the C-clips in, and get it on the plane. Because I want to fly it! <laughs> Back to work. <laughs> Everything is set. This is actually reflex for high-speed mode. And I set that based off the computer flow. Uh, it does have adjustments, so I can change. <laughs> Working with my son is so fun. Yeah, it's like we've got each other's backs. <laughs> right? It does have adjustments, so I could change how much reflex uh, I want later if I want to fine tune it. But right now, everything is angle set. Both sides are exactly the same. So I can untape it. All the Nuts, bolts, or tightness. We're gonna make this flap go up and down. Woo! Hey! Woohoo! Oh my gosh, that is so smooth and tight. Phrasing. Boy, you can't hear a thing. And it, it is just bearings. No noise, no rub. Woohoo! That is awesome. Up, down, up, down. guys I couldn't be happier when this is going up and down you hear nothing it is so smooth everything is on ball bearing and then it's got just the slightest bit of movement that's about it which is great it's got designed in tolerance and clearances for any expansion and contraction in the wings everything is set and aligned for maximum expansion and contraction to 80 below zero to over 170 degrees. So it's a lot further tolerance range than I really need. South pole discovered, baby! But all the expansion contraction for every component, every linkage is factored into it. And the only play I have is in that design. So 
Boy, I could not be happier. It is so solid. So anyway, I'm super excited. It was worth the extra work, in my opinion, to put in all ball bearings instead of bushings that need to be replaced later. Also bushings, they, as they slide back and forth a lot, they start to wear out, and then when you grab a flap, it has excessive play. Not the little bit you need, but it starts to really rattle. And so with the ball bearings, I should eliminate that or any service later. Uh, the bearings that are in it should outlast me in the next couple of generations if this plane's still around. But uh, anyway, I'm super excited. You guys know the drill. Back to work. All right, guys, so what we're doing now is finishing connecting the aileron pivot assembly. Um, everything's obviously ball bearing, and then I've made these little spacers and then got custom nylon washers. Now, the way this is designed is the aluminum spacer is all I actually need, and it rides on the bearing race where it can pinch and keeps everything square and true. However, if the bearing were to go bad somehow, this is the secondary fallback that would allow the bearing to go bad and then everything to ride on a nylon glide. So it's the secondary system and you wouldn't even know it went bad unless you inspect during annual and you would find just the slightest play, but the nylon would still track perfectly. So we've got all these little aluminum spacers and nylon backup slides. Let's get them installed, back to work. All right, guys, we're getting closer every second. These are now the last of the pulleys going in scrappy. These bolt up directly to the custom ribs. This is the pulley pivot assembly that pivots back and forth to do the drooping aileron. So I'm going to get all this installed and hopefully in the next hour or two, I'll run my flaps and watch the ailerons run at just about 50% of the movement. So, back to work. All right, guys. So. <laughs> I brought the supercomputer downstairs because there's so many little pieces and I want to make sure that I got the right washer, washer thickness, um, bearings and things are easy because only one size fits right, but this is awesome because I can come in here and rotate around, check all the parts, zoom in, and if I want, I can click on the very bolt I need. And then when it pulls up, I can come up here and say, oh, that's an AN4-24A. And I know I've got my minimum of three to four threads out the back, what thickness of washers. So every single part is in here. And if I want, I can grab and manipulate it. So anyway, I was finding myself running up and down the stairs through my other shop. So it was a lot easier to move the computer. Back to work. All right, guys, this has been a long time coming. My new design of the drooping ailerons that are all done with push rods connected at both ends, pivoting cable pulley assemblies. So, if I have here more of this flap and this aileron goes up, I quit. <laughs> so, go, girl, go down. There is not a sound. Everything's all ball bearing. I can't hear anything. 
up, down. I'm gonna bend something if I push any harder. Woo! Holy crap! I'm excited! This plane needs to fly. Back to work. Mark just showed up. He hasn't seen what we've been playing with, so. Oh! Wow! Wow, do that again. Oh, you're kidding. <laughs> Holy crap. Do it again. Do it again. <laughs> oh my gosh, it's a 40, 50% of the, just under 50% of the flat. Oh! That's <laughs> so tight. Do it again. Holy crap! It's so great to have a twin brother. It's so rewarding. <laughs> That's awesome. I could watch that all day. Dude, nothing changes. No, there's no tension change. The way the pulley, the cable wrap, the back and forth uh, pulleys, there's no cable change at all. So there's no a pound of pressure. It's so smooth. Bearings. Every single thing in there has ball bearings. Oh my gosh. Can you hear anything? The quietest. <laughs> oh, the things are easily satisfied. scrappy I can't believe how long ago I made these these are the internal foot rests inside scrappy for the person in the back seat to have something really solid they can plant their foot against so they don't feel like they're sliding around in the seat um, there are 12 flies so you could jump on them stand on them kick them get scared and try and push them through but they're solid I guess I'm just excited because they haven't been on since I made them when I did the interior panels and they finally go on. I was only waiting for the last set of pulleys for the aileron pass-throughs to the control stick connection. Now that that's done, this is going in to stay. One more, back to work.